Hi. So authentication is probably one of the most common solutions every app that handles user data needs to deal with. And so today we're going to implement authentication to a Next.js app using Auth.js and Zeta. Awesome. So before we get started, what I ran was PNPX because I use PNPM. Create next app. I use the Canary uh, release because I really wanted to use the Tailwind flag. Once that's done, I got the I got this little app here, which was the default one. But as you can see, I made a few modifications. So I basically just deleted a bunch of stuff and added. Um, the link attribute and I got like some extra um, component, like just the icon actually that I got from hero icons um, and pasted as SVG. That's it. Final code from this video is already pushed on the link uh, right below the look, the like button. The first thing we need to do though, I'll stop my development server for a little bit. We need to add next auth. We also need to get the schema on the next auth Zeta adapter documentation. I'm gonna grab the schema that's from a database. That's, I'll just come over here and minimize everything in here. Just, and what this JSON is gonna do is I'm gonna push this JSON straight to my Zata database. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is, um, as you can see here on my Zeta extension, I'm not synced to any database yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pnpx at Zeta.io CLI latest. I'm gonna run init and I'm gonna pass the schema.json. You can have the CLI installed uh, locally. So once this is done, I can come here and I can, I don't know, go to my own database and I want to create a new one and I'm gonna call it auth.js Zeta and my region is gonna be EU West because it's the closest one for me and it's the default region in my deployment. There you go. So now I have all the migration that's prepared. So it's adding the column, bada boom. And now if I come here and refresh it, you see that I have already something set up. I already have my database uh, and it is empty as we speak. And then you will see that the CLI already created my .env. So my cold gen task that I'm going to create is going to be Zeta colon cold gen. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pnpx again and Zeta U slash CLI at the latest. I'm going to run then the cold gen. And that's going to be enough because now the last step, come over here to the Zeta RC and I'm going to add some settings for my cold gen and I'm going to set the output to be on the lib folder and I want it to be Zeta cold gen. I like to prefix cold generator files with dot cold gen server and that's going to be it. So now if everything works, I'm going to get an extra folder called lib and I'm going to have a file inside. So let's see, pnpm zeta cold gen. Okay, cold gen generated. We are back at our app that's running. Let's restart the TypeScript server. You see it's gonna stop complaining. Awesome. So I don't need to look at this again. So the first thing is there's still an open issue for um, auth.js or next auth if you prefer to support the route handlers. So we're not gonna use those today. Instead, we need to then create the pages, API, and then we are gonna create the auth as the main path of it. I'm gonna spread the parameter here. And then, awesome. So now what we need to do is import from next auth. I'm also gonna be using GitHub as my provider. From the list of providers, you can choose like whatever you need whatever you want to use. I'm going to use GitHub because I think it's one of the easiest to set up. Um, and then I also am going to need the next auth um, Zeta adapter, which by the way, I forgot to bring it in uh, on the 
before. So what you need to do is basically just run pnpm next auth z adapter. First thing I need to instantiate my client. So I'm going to create a new Zeta client. And now let's create the auth config, which we need to export this. So this is the this is the one setting that we need to make to plug in our database to our authentication system. Lastly, we need to set up the providers, which is are an array, so you can have multiple ones. And the GitHub provider takes a client ID, process.m. So that should be an environment variable. Awesome. And finally, what exports is next auth, which is essentially a higher order function. And we're going to pass this config as a parameter. And now we can just export. So now that we have set up our API route, let's go and get ourselves the GitHub ID and the GitHub secret. And once you log into GitHub, we go all the way to settings, go all the way down to developer settings, finally OAuth apps. And here you can create an, a new one and I'm going to reuse the Zeta next OAuth. So here's one important thing. We are going to need two of them, actually one for each environment because they point out to different callback URLs. And then on the callback URL, put whatever port your application is going to be running. All these other stuff, they don't really matter right now. And then you're going to generate a new secret and uh, a new GitHub uh, client ID. And these are the ones. So this one, this is the GitHub client ID. So you can click on generate back to your project go to the env config and add it there as github secret and github client. Back our code. Now I'm on the page inside my, my root page inside my app directory. This is a server component, which means I can wait it and I can get and remember, we just exported the auth config. That's the parameter it takes and a synchronous function. And then we wait. Now we have the session. And then here, I'm gonna check if I have the session to invite an implicit programming, I'll convert a session to Boolean myself. And if we do have a session, I want it to return the link. And if we don't have a session, I want it to be a button type button. So we say knock, knock. If we don't have a session, otherwise, um, we can just say, hi friend, a wave emoji. Hello. Cause it's waving. Yeah. We are going to add a login button that we still need to create. So, so let's come in and say login TSX. Awesome. So first of all, this is going to be a client component because it has some interactivity to it. And first of all, we're going to have an in flight to make sure people don't click on the button like more than once. It's going to set an in flight quick and dirty. Um, with the use state and form component. Form component has submit button flight. I'm gonna disable it. We just need to add on submit handler, prevent the default. Otherwise it's gonna trigger page refresh and we don't want because we are now on single page application land. So we do that and then we set in flight to true. Import sign in and now I have the sign in. I'm gonna pass GitHub and our callback URL is going to be slash in. And now that we have our button, let's click on the knock knock. So we're prompt to log in. I authorize access to my GitHub account and bam, we are inside. Now that I have this, because it's a server component, I can again get the session. Here I am. So, so lastly, the last thing that we need to do is then if there is no session or user in the session, redirect to the root page. Uh, the redirect actually comes from the navigation package. And so here we are. So now let's go back. It already has my login. So yeah, hello. Bam. Let's make the logout button, right? Now I actually just copy paste my login, call it logout.
we had a logout so we have this buy now i click it logged out back in and yeah that's it that's how you create authentication on xjs app with authjs and you plug it into zeta now keep tuned for the next video that we implement role level security and make sure we don't leak data between different users on a single database so see ya